So have any of you heard art advice that was just not it? I'm sure all of us have. Everybody has that art advice that was just not great. And essentially today we're going over my least favorite art advice. And art advice that I either don't think is very useful or I just don't like it and it does not vibe with me. If it vibes with you, great. But not me. Now this one, I'm not talking about the art really in this one because admittedly I'm not sure what the art is going to be. I may have to reuse footage. I have had a lot going on. I haven't had a chance to make very much new footage. So it might be, you know, one that's getting reused. So I wanted to let you know about that. But that aside, let's get into this. So the first bit of art advice that I don't care for is just draw or just practice. Now let me say, I have been guilty of giving this advice. But thinking on it, I really don't like it. I just, I don't like hearing it personally. I don't like, I really don't like giving it now that I've given it more thought. And here's, here's why. Saying just draw is, is nice because it's true. Just drawing, yes, that is how you get better. Just doing it more, continuing to practice and do more. But it's so directionless. It's so vague. I really think if somebody asks, you know, how do I get better? How do I improve? I really think, honestly, you should ask some follow-up questions. Like, what specifically are you looking to improve with? What are you struggling with? You could maybe give some resources like oh i found this for studying hands or for posing anatomy etc just saying just draw and just practice is such a vague form of advice and it really doesn't give anybody very much to work with and breaking it down piece by piece this is something that i need to do more whenever i give art advice when somebody asks me a question I need to do this more myself, and I think all of us are pretty guilty of that, but it's so frustrating to hear, so that's definitely the first one up on the list. Second, learn the rules before you break them. I get the idea behind it. I do. I understand, and this is probably going to be one that people don't agree with me on. However, and I, and I say this because personally, it has impacted me in a detrimental way. Telling people to learn the rules before you break them is essentially learn how to draw realistically and learn the uh, learn everything you can about realism before you go into more stylized work. The problem with that is, and as I said, this is something that's impacted me, focusing too much on realism, especially if you're more interested in doing stylized work, it can actually hinder your ability to stylize. You get so into making sure that things look right and things look how they're supposed to that you have trouble doing those exaggerations that you need in order to stylize. And it can even impact attempting to find your style. It's something that people don't think a lot about. Do I recommend doing studies like more realistic anatomy studies and things like that? Oh, definitely. Things like that are going to be helpful no matter what. Practicing realism itself, just in general, is not a detriment. At least I don't think so. It, from my personal experiences, because that's all I can speak on. Practicing realism and learning obviously is not going to be very much of a detriment. However, learning to let yourself break those rules after you've learned them can be that much harder if they're very strongly ingrained into you. And it can get to the point of leaving you with very stiff artwork. That's one thing I struggle with with my posing. Sometimes things come out too stiff. I have trouble trying to pose things a certain way because, well, realistically, that particular body part can't do that properly the way I need it to for that posing. And it ends up with very stiff very stiff figures, very stiff characters, and it can hit in a way, too, where you're not great at realism, like me, I'm not great at realism, 
but I've learned enough about realism that it forces its way into the stylized work and it makes it harder. So I think that practicing both side by side, at least personally for me, has been what I've found to be most bene beneficial, especially if it's making me get out of my comfort zone a little bit. If you can find ways to practice both side by side, you know, like maybe take a couple days out of the week to practice realism, a couple days out of the week to practice your more stylized stuff. That's probably going to benefit you a whole lot more in the long run, and that's really what I recommend with it, too. So that's it for learning the rules before you break them. Like I said, that was number two. Number three. Don't trace ever. I literally did an entire video on this topic. I will do my best to remember to link it down below. I'm really bad about forgetting that. Hopefully I will get better at it as things progress. But to sum up, one of the reasons why I don't think that that's a good piece of advice, I actually, it's not just a matter of it being my least, one of my least favorite pieces of art advice. It is something that I legitimately find to be a bad piece of advice. Because tracing is a skill set on its own. It's a useful tool for learning. It's a very useful tool for learning. And I do think, you know, you have the, ca the caveat of don't trace without permission. Don't trace and post it and pretend it's your own. Don't trace without giving credit. Things like that. Things that make sense. However, even outside of it being a learning tool, it's also a crucial tool in different industries. Somebody on my tracing video pointed out rotoscoping. I had a couple people actually mention that. But rotoscoping, especially for like older Disney animations and things like that. You know, you've got the recording of somebody moving and then you go back and you trace over it for the animation to get the movements correct and as smooth as they need to be. That is, tracing is literally a skill that was used there. Another industry that I actually did remember to use in my, um, in my video about tracing was the tattoo industry. Tracing is a very critical skill to learn for tattooing because, as I said in that, I don't care how good a tattoo artist you are, if you have not traced a stencil and put it on my arm or my leg or wherever I'm getting a tattoo, and I'm saying this is somebody with several tattoos. If you come at me with that machine with no stencil on me, you're not going to touch me with that machine. There will be no ink going into my skin. It just... I don't want... I don't... I don't want to go into this hugely again. But I do think that it's something that needs to be taken into account. It's a critical tool, not just for learning, but in different industries as well. You can't just not trace ever if you want to go into specific industries. The next one is never use references. Again, I did a whole video on this. The biggest thing it comes down to, for one thing, it's almost impossible not to reference because even if you're taking from your imagination, your imagination is pulling from what we call your visual library, which is things that you have visually seen in real life before. And because the brain just kind of mishmashes things together in order to create that for your imagination. So you're referencing regardless. But additionally, learning new things, especially learning new things like studying anatomy and studying facial features, how to draw portraits, how to do characters, Almost any of that is going to require references in general. It's one of those things you, you can't really not, not use references. And references and looking at other examples in order to really figure out how you want to do something can elevate your art to a whole new level. It's just... It's really hard to dispute that. I know there are some people who don't use references and produce beautiful art. However, especially if you're drawing something that you haven't very often before, references can be crucial and, and can make the difference between something that you're kind of, eh, I'm alright with it, it came out okay, and oh my gosh, I really like how this turned out. That can be the difference. So they are important. Now coming to the next one. This is another one that some people are going to be mad about, especially because I know there have been challenges with this. 
and other people are going to be like, okay, that makes sense. And that is draw every day. This is another one of those pieces of advice that I just do not like. I don't think it's viable for one thing. It's not usually very feasible, especially if you work full time. And a good example is my job. Where I work, by by literally our work contract, say somebody calls off and nobody else wants to pick it up. We're a 24-hour facility. You can get mandated and that 8-hour shift is suddenly turned into a 16. And just, oh boy! Now I just don't get to go home for a whole other shift. And then especially if you have to turn around and work the next day. Where are you going to draw in that? And it happens more often than you would think. Or even just working a full-time job, if you've got that and then errands that you have to run. Drawing every day is not always feasible for a lot of people, especially nowadays where so many people have to work two jobs just to get by with a basic income, just to barely make it through. It's not always feasible. You can't always find that time. And I understand if you're really passionate about it, you will make time. However, there are days where you're just going to be too exhausted to do that. And not only that, it can lead to really bad burnout if you push yourself too hard on it. It can lead to feeling guilty because, oh, I didn't do enough because I didn't manage to draw today. How am I supposed to get better if I don't manage to draw every single day? The guilt and the burnout really aren't worth it. Especially when targeted practice, like on things that you know you struggle with and have trouble with on other days, are going to do so much more for you than just drawing every single day. Taking time for targeted practice sessions is going to benefit you so much more in the long run. It just will. Because drawing every day aimlessly without that targeted practice, you're going to improve, yeah, at a, at a pretty consistent rate, but it's going to be much more moderate, much more slow than when you focus in on certain things. And like I said, the burnout and the guilt aren't worth it, and sometimes it's just not feasible. So I never really liked this bit of art advice, even back whenever I could draw every single day. Because some days, your head just isn't cooperating with your hand. There are times where your your hand and your brain just are not going to work together. They're having a feud of some sort, and it's just not happening. Your hand says no, your brain says no, and just, uh-uh. It's not going to happen. So, this is something that I definitely don't recommend as a piece of art advice. Now, this is one that I am very firm about. In regard to thinking that it's bad. And the piece of advice is, don't use a stabilizer. Okay, you ableist, knuckle-headed peanut. Shut up. Look, that was harsh. I recognize that. However, I stand by it because the stabilizer is something that, for one thing, it's, it's an important accessibility tool for people who want to create, but maybe they have an injury. Maybe they have a disability. They got, they had something go on medically. Many other things. Carpal tunnel. Somebody who just has shaky hands naturally. That happens. Especially like you get into digital art. People who are older may not be able to keep their hand as steady. And that's not their fault. They shouldn't be locked out of art because of that. That's not fair. And it's just... It's one of those things, I use it. I use a stabilizer. I don't have it on a very high setting because I don't need it on a very high setting. However, I still use it. It's still useful. My lines without one are so wobbly and this is despite the fact that I have done a lot of traditional art and a lot of pen on paper art where you don't have an undo button and you have to rely on the steadiness of your hand in order to get straight lines and even lines without much difficulty. However, I think that just because a tool makes something easier and more reasonable to achieve doesn't make it bad. That's like telling someone not to use like a power saw over a hand saw because it's cheating because a power saw makes things too easy. 
it is the same principle of just making something easier to achieve. It's one of those things, it's like with, with other tools that are available, especially in digital art. Just because it's a tool that's available and makes things a little bit easier or makes the process faster doesn't make it a bad thing. And I think that people who advocate that it does really need educated on why that's not true and why that outlook is honestly ableist in a lot of, in a lot of, you know, in a lot of things, in a lot of ways. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. I can't word today apparently, but I think I'm doing pretty decently. But that's something that I just, I can't stand when people say it. And I just, it's so frustrating to me. So that brings us to the very last one. And that is, this one's a bit more of a broad one, but it's also one that I have a decent bit to say about. And that is, don't draw insert thing here. It could be cartoons, anime, fan art. There are so many possibilities of what you could put into that sentence that people have said before. And it's especially if it's associated with like kids media or anime or things that females are more into because immediately a lot of those get dismissed as just, eh, it's not important, it's unimportant, it's bad, it's going to be a detriment. And honestly, regardless of which one it is, I don't feel like should be immediately discouraged from creating things within their interests just because someone else makes it seem. I've always hated that very firm piece of art advice. I heard it a lot whenever I was younger. Why don't you draw in a more Western style? Why don't you draw like Western comics? Like that kind of style where it's a bit more realistic, more like stylized realism. And it gets to me because I can draw in that style if I want to. I can if I want to, but it's not what I enjoy drawing. I'm not going to pour a whole lot into it when I can already, you know, when I can do it, when I don't enjoy doing it. It's something that doesn't hold my interest despite the fact that I have an interest in Western comics and things like that. I love superhero comics. I love that kind of stuff. I grew up on classic Batman and X-Men comics because my uncle had a bunch of them and let me read them. However, it's not what I enjoy drawing as much. I just, I don't. I prefer, personally, the more expressive eyes that you get in anime. The bigger, pretty eyes. I like that. I think that's far more expressive and visually interesting. And I just... I've always gravitated towards that. That's why I draw that way and why I usually have. I've gone through phases where I drew a bit more, you know, Western comics. But overall, I, I don't feel like certain interests should be made to be lesser and that people should be discouraged from them. Now, that said, expanding your skill set is something that is very important. But... As an artist, I feel like it's equally important to be true to your creative self. Like, it's different if you're in a class or if you're doing something where you've got a specific assignment and you need to fit within these constraints. That's different. I'm talking about when people tell you that you shouldn't do that in your personal time, in your personal art. Studies are important and learning to do new things, that's very important. However, if you're making art for yourself or for a personal project, I don't think you should be shamed for drawing something that makes you happy. Because each of us who does art, even if we do similar art to somebody else, we have our own creative selves, we have our own outlooks and our own experiences, and that's going to come out in our art regardless. So why not let it come out in a way that makes you feel the best about it? I don't see why not. Especially because people make a full living off of original art and fan art and cartoons, comics, all of that. So I don't think any of it should be devalued. Stuff that's made for kids, people make a full living off of that. Children's book illustrators. 
animators for shows like Bluey, which I will say that is one of the best little cartoons. If you've never seen it, doesn't matter if you have kids or not. Me and my sister, Andy, we watch it with my nephew, and I think we watch it more than he does because it's such a good little show. But I'm gonna, I'm, I digress on that. All of these things are things that people make a living off of doing. And the ones who do the, the ones that people devalue and act like are lesser are usually the ones who are far more passionate about what they're doing. And I think that all of us as creatives should be allowed to make things that we're passionate about, you know, so long as it's within the bounds of what is legal and nobody's making things that they shouldn't, like on a moral level, shouldn't. But I think that devaluing those things is a bad idea. And look, one thing I want to say about it especially is I've seen things with a dot on a canvas being high art and all that in a gallery. If that can be high art, then other forms of art can just be art that people are allowed to enjoy. Stop devaluing things. And I have to tie the, toss this in here. Everybody speaks so highly of classical art when frankly... Classical art, the majority of it, is just Bible fan art, so people need to chill a little bit on devaluing other fan art and other forms of art, because I have seen some beautiful fan art. I think at the end, what I just want to say here is, it's really up to each person individually what they deem as good and bad art, art advice. There are some here that I think are objectively bad, but there are some here that are bad because of just my personal opinion and other people might find them to be good advice that's not for me to say what is good and bad for other people that's why this is art advice that I hate not art advice that is bad but regardless go seek out advice that you really like is there other advice that you've heard that you think is bad and you think should be mentioned here if so definitely let me know because I'm very interested to hear what you guys have been told is good or bad advice in the, in the past or what you view as good or bad advice or ones that I have completely missed here because I know I've missed different ones because everybody's heard different things and everybody has different things that they think of when they think of bad art advice. So real quick, I do want to give a shout out to my patrons. We've got Salmon, Inside Chaos, and Creativa Artly. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And as for everyone else, I appreciate you guys a ton. If you like this video, leave a like on it. Maybe see about subscribing if you want to see more stuff. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day and takes care of themselves. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!